ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فالسلام الله عليكم ورحمه وبركاته all praise due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the amount of blessings that he has bestowed upon us and amongst those great blessings is the best one which is al islam today inshallah the topic that we will be speaking about is three ways to stay firm on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asbab athubut ala deen Allah thalath asbab three ways inshallah we're going to speak about that bin Allah ta'ala the first one inshallah is and first of all what do we mean by you know uh, staying firm staying steadfast it means that you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you firm upon this religion of al islam the first way inshallah is we're going to speak about is al iman billah al iman billah believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because how are you going to be steadfast on the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but uh, al iman billah is very very important inshallah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants us to believe in him and these are one of the ways that you can be in the light ta'ala stay firm and stay steadfast upon the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul allah ta'ala yuthabbitu allah alladhina amanu bil qawli thabit fi al hayat al dunya wa fi al akhirah إلى آخر الآية that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's mentioning in this verse that he keeps firm those who believe in him بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا meaning he keeps them firm with لا إله إلا الله the kalima of tawheed in this dunya so it is not very easy for somebody to say la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah is a very very heavy 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 sentence that somebody says subhanallah when somebody is witnessing that there is no god worthy of worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala submitting himself submitting herself to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are preparing themselves inshallah to go to jannah and they accept this and they abide by it and they follow what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants we're not just muslims by you know saying la ilaha illallah or just muslims just like that yes you are muslim by saying la ilaha illallah yes you are muslim if you say you are muslim i'm not going to doubt that but are you doing what is required from you to be accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a true believer are you truly somebody who submits who surrenders themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you truly fasting to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you truly going to hajj to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for you to be known as al hajj hajj so and so or for people to see you and say wow that brother he fasts ramadan not only does he fast ramadan but he fasts the days of the sunnah that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to fast the white days ayam al bayd mondays and thursdays this person is amazing is that why you're fasting so people can see you break your fast in the masjid when your intention is to let people know that you are fasting and they see you breaking your fast and they say wow this person is a taqi he's a pious person why why are you fasting why are you worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is it just something that you were brought up with culturally and you say you know what i see my mom and my father fast i'm going to fast this is a religion this is a way of life 
So believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the ways that somebody can stay firm upon this religion. As-sabab al-thani, al-faqr, al-shu'ur bil-faqr in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you feel that you are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody who is in need. We are truly in need. We cannot be without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one millisecond. We cannot be without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times because we are poor. We are in need. We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of how much wealth you may have, regardless of how many houses and mansions and vehicles and different types of currencies, different types of bank accounts that you may have, in the end of the day, you are poor in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, or I, I apologize, Ummu Salama radiallahu anha was asked which dua the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sallam used to frequently make when he was at her house. And she said, that he used to say, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik. Oh, the turner of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. Who's the one who turns the hearts? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who's the one who's keeping us firm? Who's the one who's making it possible for you and I to benefit from this lecture? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we as Muslims, bidnillah ta'ala, we have to always realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who keeps people firm upon his religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who keeps people firm upon the Islam. So do not doubt or do not feel that you are the one who are guided, who was guided by, you guided yourself. Do not feel that, feel that you are the one who guided yourself. Always realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa alladhi yahdi, he is the one who guides. Huwa alladhi yadil, and who is the one who, he is the one who misguides. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does this. And without the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none of us could be Muslims. None of us could benefit from what we are doing right now, the month of Ramadan, without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And if the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua frequently, then we should make this dua even more. Even more. Because he was guaranteed Jannah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was guaranteed the paradise. He was the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us had the best character, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was a role model, Qudwatun Hasana, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Therefore, as Muslims, we have to be in the Ta'ala, ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala always, and understand that we are in dire need of his guidance and we are in dire need of him keeping us firm upon the religion of a tawheed la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah min asbab al-thabat kadhalik one of the ways that we can stay firm upon the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tarkul ma'asi leaving off sins leaving off sins is very, very important. Because we, at any time, can die in a state of sinning billah. We at any time can die in a way that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we all know, al-a'malu al khawatim So the way you end, it's very, very important how you leave this dunya. 
the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to stay away from sinning. Tarku al-ma'asir. Wa hunaka dhunub yusamma kabair. And here there are sins that are called major sins. And there are sins that are called sawair from the minor sins. The major sins, ayyuhal ikhwa wal akhawat, require tawbah. Ma ma'ana tawbah? What does tawbah mean? Repenting it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, in Surah at tahrim A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا الله سبحانه وتعالى mentioned in the Quran O you who believe توبوا repent to Allah سبحانه وتعالى توبة نصوحا a sincere repentance so repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very important. وَتَرَكُ الْمُعَاصِي مِنْ أَسْبَابِ الثَّبَاتِ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And leaving off sins is one of the ways that we stay firm upon the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we know that the shayateen, the shayateen are locked. We're in the month of Ramadan, the 19th day of Ramadan, Tomorrow, subhanallah, marra sahab. Ramadan went so fast, like the way clouds go by. So fast. Just yesterday we were talking about that we cannot go to the masjid to pray salat al taraweeh or salat al jamaah in the masjid. And now we're almost on the last 10. Can we believe it? Believe it. And just like that, time is going to go. How do you feel meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are sinning so much? Collecting sins and sins and sins. And next thing you know, you're 60. Next thing you know, you're 70. Next thing you know, you're 40, 45. What have you done with your life? How much sins have you collected? How do you feel? How are you going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And even though you're committing so many sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still kept you as a Muslim. Subhanallah. Shouldn't we feel ashamed, shy? The blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're sinning and we're sinning, we're sinning and we're still Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have easily misguided you and put you to the path of hellfire, but he still has given you a chance. He is still making it possible for you to be somebody who is bowing down to him to fast, to make dua. Allahu Akbar. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and change the way you are living if you are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a better way. What is this dunya, brothers and sisters in Islam? Except for a couple of days. What were those who were before us? What were they? Where are they? What will we be? How will we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how will we be able to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah and present ourselves? Well, you know what? You are not going to present yourself because everything that will be presented for you has already been prepared. How? Kiram al-Katibin. The angels wrote everything down. On that day, it's not like the dunya. You go to your boss, or you go to a job, and you're applying to this job, and you dress up so nice, and you wear your suit, and you present yourself. Yom al-Qiyamah, you're, you're already going to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of what you have done. You can't change that day. That day, 
is not a day for amal and salih, for good deeds. Now is the time for amal and salih. You have now, this second, you want to make it worth, you better work hard. Say subhanallah, say alhamdulillah, say la ilaha illallah, make dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you firm. Give sadaqah, charity. Be good to your family. Be good to your wives. Allah al-Azim. Be good to your children. Be good to your parents. Be good وَهَذِهِ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ عَدَمُ التَّوْفِيقِ One of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make things easy for you is being somebody who is not loyal or obedient to their parents. SubhanAllah. And this is one of the major sins. We spoke about تَرْكُ maasi Major sins. عُقُوقُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ Disobeying your parents. So these three, inshallah, reasons, asbab, al-thubut of staying firm in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or asbab al-thabat fi deen, are first, al-iman billah, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thani is that you feel that you are somebody who is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or rather, not feel, you are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-faqru in Allah. Thalithan, tarku al-ma'asi. Leaving off sins. The third point, inshallah, sins are, it's very easy for you to say you're going to leave off sins but you may find yourself continuously falling into these sins. And some of the ways that you can, inshallah, stay away from sins is one, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikrullah. You're about to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember who he is. His greatness, azamati. His punishment. If you disobey him. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the ways to stay away from sinning is as-suhbatu saliha, having good friends around you, good acquaintances, friends. Very, very important for the young ones who go to high school, who go to university. You are going to be influenced by a lot of people in a good way or in a bad way. And that goes for everybody, whether you are a child or whether you are an adult in any type of age group. So you make sure that you are always surrounded by good companionship because they're gonna remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as opposed to companions who are sinning, who are listening to music, who are doing haram things, who are going to haram places. You're gonna be influenced. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. Stay with the people. They have an effect on you. Therefore, making you somebody who is a positive person. Somebody who is turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the opposite. Therefore, hunaka shurut, shurut li tawbah. And there are three, thalath. Awalan, first you stop committing that sin. Now, after the halaqa, you had an intention, you know what? I'm going to have nice iftar, and then I'm going to get comfortable, and I'm going to put on, you know, Netflix. I'm going to watch three movies tonight until suhoor. You're preparing before iftar. And then you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, forgive me of my sins. And you find the sweetness of the sin you're about to commit still inside you. You're not sincere. So stop right now. If you have the intention to do something after Salatul Isha or after Iftar, stop right now. Stop right now. Make sure that you stop whatever that sin is. 
Second of all, you have to feel sorry about that sin you have committed. And nadamu al maasiyah وَثَالِثًا Third of all, that you don't do it in the future. So stop it, feel that sorriness, and do not have an intention to do it in the future. In Allah Ta'ala. Very, very important. And these three conditions, inshaAllah, are conditions for making tawbah for major sins. Now, now Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran, spoke about the companions. In one of the surahs, Surah Al-Bayyina, Yaqulullahu Ta'ala, Radiyallahu Anhum wa Radu an. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Who are they? The companions. How did they reach that? By fearing Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala sincerely. They reached that level. You want to reach the level of the companions? And we're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret? Doesn't work. Does not work. Therefore, sincerity when it comes to your actions is very, very important. There are two conditions for your actions to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Awalan al ikhlas being sincere. وَثَانِيًا الْمُتَابَعَةِ Following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to be sincere if you want your actions to be accepted. You have to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for show. You don't pray Allahu Akbar and then look all over the place and, you know, play, pray without any, you know, humility. And then when your sheikh comes in, Allahu Akbar. So amazing. When did you change? When that person came in and they saw you. Before, where were you? You were all over the place. You were in, you know, uh, China, then you went to, you know, another place, then you went to another country, and then you went to, you know, so-and-so country, and then you went to your job place, right? And then you went to the kitchen, you're thinking about the food. You're all over the place, right? Looking up, looking sideways. Looking at your shoe, uh, at your feet. Then when somebody came in, you changed. How come? You weren't sincere. You were doing it for show, right? So your actions have to be sincere. Your actions have to be sincerely and purely, one hundred percent for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Thanian. Second one is al mutabaa Follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't do things the way you want to. This religion is, it's not, it's not a menu you choose. Um, you know what? Today, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it my own way. No. Take the sunnah as is and accept it. Follow the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not get me wrong. There are some things that are sunnah in the deen. It's things that are extra. That is not a must for you to do. But there are things that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told you to do. His way, you do it. He told you to pray a specific way, you pray that way. You don't choose. You don't say, I'm going to make takbir to haram the way I don't make it. I want to make takbir to haram you know, like this, Allahu Akbar, and do like this. No, it's not how it works. See, so there's ways that you have to understand. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, take it, you take it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't follow a specific person because they made up a specific way and you think it's good. No, you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you follow the companions and you follow the Salaf al-Salih, the pious predecessors and you understand the religion the way it is supposed to be understood. So we understand ta'ala that leaving off sins is very, very important. Last point, inshallah, I'm going to make before bi'nillahi ta'ala, we um, end our lecture, inshallah, is regarding the young ones. Hopefully there are some young ones. It's not only the parents who are listening and following along. Um, 
the young ones, insha'Allah, please, please learn your religion. Because the biggest enemy that a Muslim has is ignorance. Akbaru adu wal jahl. Al jahl, ignorance. And this is for the young ones and the adults, but specifically for the young ones. Because they're, you're going to have different types of people try to make you doubt your own religion. But if you have knowledge, if you know Arkan al Iman, pillars of Iman, pillars of Islam, your aqidah, why Allah created you, what's going to happen after life, what does it mean, Hayatul Barzakh, the life in between, you know, when you die and you get resurrected, what happens? All these, you know, important aspects of your deen, if you learn it, alhamdulillah, you're not going to have doubts. You're going to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is too great for us to see him in this dunya. We are so weak. But we have, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ We have the signs. اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ Until the end of the ayah, we know ayah Allah's Sign, subhanallah, the day, the night, the sun, and the moon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many signs. So you learn your faith, you learn your, you know, creed, you learn and you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires from you, then you're going to have your protection from any other types of doubts that are going to be thrown at you when you go to high school and university and you have people try to doubt you and try to make you feel like this is not the right religion, you can actually prove to them this is the right religion and you can actually make them be in the light ta'ala by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept Islam. But how are you going to do it if you have nothing? يَقُولُ الْعَرَبُ فَاقِدُ شَيْءٍ لَا يُعْطِيهِ The one who doesn't have nothing cannot give. So make sure that you prepare yourself and you know accumulate as much knowledge as you can because the best knowledge that you can learn is la ilaha illallah the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala allah qala rasulullah that's the best knowledge best the best the best knowledge why that's the knowledge that's going to help you in the akhirah in the hereafter and that's what people need nowadays now the people are in dire need, in more need, in real need of knowledge. Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our actions, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our parents, to bless our teachers, to bless the brothers and sisters who are responsible for providing this means of knowledge jazakumullah khairan wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh